We're asked uh, often in church to sing all sorts of songs. Many of those songs contain really very powerful uh, words. And, and I hope kind of as we're singing them or just before we're singing them, we're able to kind of reflect on what we're, what we're singing because we're declaring with our lips something that um, it's, it's important that it, there is some measure of truth in, in our hearts. Harvest. Harvest is a, historically a, a fabulous time, a, a time when we have gathered everything safely in from the fields around. We've totted up the measure of our produce, perhaps grieved a little uh, at the crops that were washed out by heavy rains or for whatever reason didn't make it. But in all that we do at Harvest, we come together, we gather together to give thanks to God for his bounty upon us and this kind of harvest celebration is still really important particularly to rural communities where a much greater population or proportion i should say of the village population uh, is involved in the physical work of growing and harvesting and reaping and perhaps for us and for many in larger towns and cities the hands-on kind of markers are much less clear. However, we still bring our food. We still bring other useful provisions as a, a token of our own bounty and a, a small example of what God has blessed us with and with a, a willingness, a heart, to share from what we have to benefit others. These gifts are a great, great blessing. They will be given to the local food bank uh, for fair distribution to those who have much less than we are able to enjoy. Uh, this is a way of kind of topping up uh, what comparatively meagre provisions remains for them, strengthening the hope in the hearts of those who volunteer at food bank and perhaps more importantly those who receive from food bank alongside the the kind of practical boosting of physical nutrition for them so thank you thank you so much for all that you have brought uh, and there is still time through the week to give if you want to add to the stash or perhaps you forgot to bring your intended contribution. And let me remind you of this. This uh, green crate is placed outside in the foyer area every Sunday. There's a very similar one at the centre. Uh, and they're there all the time for you to, at any time you're in either building, to be able to bring a contribution, a modest contribution, uh, and place it in the crate and uh, whenever is it's needed, I ensure that um, the, uh, the supply is taken to the local food bank. All the time we can add to this bounty. All the time we have the freedom, the ability, the generosity to be able to contribute to the under pressure food bank coffers. So may I challenge you, first of all, to buy one more thing. One more thing, each time you shop, and just pop that into one of the crates. Little by little, it will all make a difference. That uh, video clip that uh, Stephen showed uh, spoke of a verse in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2, a verse that was crucial to the uh, response that Brother Andrew made to another hunger an area of great hunger uh, that he recognized and God prompted him towards uh, across the world. We'll come on to that particular bit shortly, but I want to try and make the link, if you'll forgive me, um, that what remains and is about to die can relate quite literally to our thoughts about physical hunger. Now. Our local food bank branches last year, so we're talking Clevedon and District here, uh, which includes Nailsey and Yatton and Portishead. They're the four areas, four specific bases 
that Clevedon and District Food Bank uh, operate in. Prosperous areas, aren't they? Wealthy, lovely, delightful. Last year, they issued 6,541 food parcels. 6,500 food parcels. Each parcel is intended to offer about three days' worth of provision. And many of those parcels are to families. So, 126 parcels a week for people who, for a variety of reasons, in our prosperous, affluent neighbourhoods, are struggling with the little that remains in their fridge or in their cupboard. Now, Christians are called to uh, feed the hungry, to help the widows and orphans, to care for the needy. We're called by God to respond to the needs that we can recognize, we can identify, we can easily spot uh, in our own communities and beyond. We're called to be aware of, the, uh, of all those in need and to be supportive uh, towards them. Now, few locally, I hope, will be near the point of dying. But the increase of physical hunger is growing. And one of the great scandals of 21st century Britain is that there is greater and greater demand on food banks across our nation. We pride ourselves on being a leading nation. We're certainly not a leading nation when it comes to how we provide best for the poorest and weakest among us. By the way, let me also acknowledge that there may be uh, some, including some here, who, who are struggling with the rising costs of living, whatever our income, whether we use food bank or not. Christians Against Poverty is another fabulous organization, CAP, another agency who can help. And let me just flag up that there is a new uh, CAP money management course starting on October the 1st at 65 High Street. So it, it, I absolutely commend this to you, for anybody, for all of us. It, it, they, they provide great tools, great advice for how we manage our money uh, and how we can ensure that it goes uh, as well as we would like it to. If you just appreciate a little advice on how best to do that, you'll find the course useful. That's the 1st of October, there's a poster about it in the center and uh, you can uh, just join in with that. So as we look at the best way uh, to feed ourselves, to feed our families, are there practical ways that we can help to strengthen what remains, even when the prospect of dying seems a little more remote? Well, practical gifts of food and uh, other provisions for our harvest response we can make. But as a church, each year's harvest service includes a focus uh, on one of our mission partners. Uh, this is an opportunity, it, it provides an opportunity for us, for those who can manage, to offer from our bounty a financial boost to those who need strengthening. And here's where that video clip is particularly uh, helpful this year. Uh, the missions team have asked that we look at open doors uh, and this is partly linked with much of what I had the privilege of witnessing and experiencing whilst traveling to a country in Central Asia with Open Doors recently. A country uh, very close to the, the, the poorest, at the very bottom of the worldwide earnings table. Uh, a slight issue we have, normally with our harvest financial gifts, we're able to to kind of ask that it goes to a particular project or a particular nation. Uh, open doors don't work like that, unfortunately, from, from this point of view. Um, they uh, look to have the freedom to uh, respond as they feel is, is most appropriate and most necessary. So I can't guarantee to you that whatever we're able to give uh, this time will go in a specific direction. But I can assure you, because I trust open doors implicitly, I can assure you that they will use our resource 
and our gifts very, very wisely. And still we feel that we want to bless their work. We want to encourage the workers, the, the modern day Brother Andrews who travel out, the partners throughout the world who are on the ground and supporting and, and uh, providing help, practical help, spiritual help, physical help to those uh, among whom they live. And through those partners, through those uh, areas of help, we want to reach out with generosity, with love, with the good news of Jesus Christ to a section of the population whose hunger may well include physical need, often does include physical need, but also uh, is certainly spiritual. So I want you to imagine a nation of 10 million people or thereabouts with a comparatively meager Christian remnant of just 3,000. Out of 10 million, there are, it is thought, 3,000 Christians. And imagine, if you can, my experience a few months ago of sitting in a room with about 30 other people and realizing that this gathering represented 1% of the entire Christian population of that nation. In a room of 30 people, so what are we now, 90 or 100, I guess, here? So 3% of the entire Christian population of that land. Just imagine what that must feel like to them. So how do we respond? How, do, how can we respond to such uh, spiritual hunger? to such biblical need and to such practical support, particularly when we're hundreds, thousands of miles away. Well, Open Doors works hard beneath the surface and <coughs> hidden as far as possible from prying eyes uh, to stand alongside brothers and sisters of ours whose love for Christ is greater than the desire for life itself. Their determination to follow Christ inspires, enables, drives them to live in a way that puts their very lives under immediate threat. And the simple act of me and a few others traveling thousands of miles to be in that room with people of all ages to assure them that people like you and me are praying for them. People like us, just like us, are choosing to stand with them. And that offers the most profound encouragement to them uh, and blesses them in the midst of such need, in the, as they feel shrouded by darkness and doubt. Has the world forgotten us? Has God forgotten us? For somebody to go and say, hi, we're with you. We do what we can. We pray as much as we can for you. You see, so often the experience of many of our persecuted sisters and brothers is that they are singled out, they are arrested, they're dragged off to a, uh, a police station or something of its ilk. They're taken to a secret place to be very heavily questioned and often very severely beaten. Each time the interrogators are trying to convince them, that individual, that they are isolated that they are the only one, that they are a lone voice, that they are the single uh, rebellious nature against the regime. And so often these individuals are threatened with every conceivable violence until they give in and they feel under increasing pressure to deny Jesus as Lord. But friends, so often they refuse to give in. So often they stand firm, they hold tight to the promises of Jesus, and that's fueled by our prayers and our gifts. Our persecuted brothers and sisters are strengthened to stand firm because of the very powerful presence of the Holy Spirit at work in their hearts, alongside sometimes memories or stories of others who have traveled to see them, encouraged and prayed with them 
and sometimes bless them with practical aid. If you've got a Bible, turn with me to 2 Corinthians and chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And uh, let me read from verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now, verse 10, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed, enlarging the harvest of your righteousness. It should be counted as our privilege, alongside our responsibility to be able to supply that seed, that bread, to offer the wherewithal to enlarge hope and harvest for others. What though is the effect? What's the result of whatever help we are able and willing to offer? It's so little. How, how far will a few tins of beans and some semi-skimmed milk go? It feels so little. Well, turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark's gospel and chapter 4 and verse 30. <clears throat> Matthew 4, verse 30. Mark, Mark, Mark. The other one. Sorry. Turn with me to Mark, chapter 4, verse 30. Again, Jesus said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows. It becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Return to that um, phrase, strengthen what remains. And we can picture something small, something which is about to die, Revelation 3, verse 2 puts it. Something which appears to be diminishing, even on the verge of extinguished, being extinguished completely. And for me, this gives a picture of, the, uh, of a church that is weakening, that is diminishing as strength is sapped from those who strive to remain faithful, even under attack. Now, Brother Andrew, who we heard about in that video clip, felt compelled to offer some kind of response for those he heard about in a spiritually dark situation. What could he do? A, a single, simple Dutchman at a college in Glasgow. What could he do? What could he manage? Well, all he could do in his trusty blue VW Beetle was tiny in comparison to the scale of need. And yet, faithfully, fervently, he answered the call. 
You see, Andrew felt the call of God on his life. And despite the threat of danger to him, ignoring many, many reasons to walk away, and grasping the powerful spiritual weapon of prayer, Andrew offered his small seed by allowing God to do the rest. So as we heard in 1955, Andrew attended a, a communist youth congress in Poland with a few extra Bibles and a prayer that his illegal contraband would uh, remain undiscovered. A small offering, but the seed from which a vast international ministry has grown. Andrew found a small group of uh, secret Christians who felt isolated, who felt alone, who, who thought that the rest of the world uh, had forgotten them if ever they knew about them. A small seed, what could possibly change? Well, 45 years later, the Berlin Wall came down. Unexpectedly across the whole of, of Western Europe, none of us expected that to ever happen. The supremacy of the communist regime that covered so much of the world disintegrated. The impossible happened. God took those small seeds, Brother Andrews and many, many others, and created something far bigger than the most powerful regime in the world. The need to stand alongside those who share the pain of, uh, of assumed isolation, though, remains. Communism has diminished. It's still there in certain places, certainly. But the, the needs have changed. Open Doors still distributes hundreds of thousands of Bibles and other Christian books each year. Other needs have emerged as well. For example, in some countries, pastors have little or no formal training. So Open Doors steps in to provide some measure of teaching so that they can be more effective in leading congregations. In other regions, uh, Christians are discriminated against, denied education, denied quality job opportunities. So Open Doors, alongside their partners, seeks to strengthen the church by providing small loans to Christians to help them start businesses, such as the beekeeper, the, the tourist guide, the nursery school teachers that I met in May. The needs, and therefore the strategies, vary from country to country, but each example, every example, um, depends upon people just like us offering a tiny seed Perhaps regular seeds of hope accompanied by the power of prayer that God will create growth and encouragement. Uh, today, um, this was alluded to in the uh, terrific prayers of intercession that we had. Today, the main threat to Christians comes not from communism, but from radical Islam. Before he died a couple of years ago, Brother Andrew uh, was able to travel extensively in the Islamic world. He found ways beyond the uh, ability of most politicians throughout the world. He found ways to meet with and talk properly to the leaders of Hamas, of Islamic Jihad, of Hezbollah. Brother Andrew was among the very few Western leaders to regularly travel to the Middle East as an ambassador for Jesus with the freedom to speak to these groups. That work has now been picked up by others. Brother Andrew died a couple of years ago. But the work remains, it you know, continues to be led by Christ, working for Christ, people protected by Christ, and something else we can pray about and support. As we hear um, such stories, true stories of fellow believers, two questions spring to my mind. Uh, how would we react in the face of such difficulties here? How would we behave? And what can we do? What can we do for those for whom that experience is real? Well, we can do what I hope others would do 
in reacting towards our need. We can offer our small seed, a small seed of hope nourished by prayer, <coughs> asking that God allows growth on the scale of the largest of garden plants. With such coverage, even birds can perch in its shade. Will we join with others to do so? As one expression of our gratitude to God for the bounty of his provision, his spiritual provision to us. As one expression of thanks to him for the freedom we relish. Might we be willing to give whatever we can to assure our brothers and sisters that they are not alone. They are not forgotten. And we long to see them strengthened. Will we stand up to be counted among those who struggle so deeply? Our financial gifts today, therefore, will go to this work, the work of Open Doors, vital work of Open Doors. Uh, and if you've not come prepared today to make uh, an offering but would like to, absolutely no uh, compunction to at all. But over the next two weeks, you can place uh, money in the offering bag that is clearly marked for OD Harvest or send it to, uh, to the, through the bank, uh, online banking system, but with a reference that makes it clear to Stephen what that's for. OD Harvest, please. Uh, you can, of course, also sign up to be a regular giver to the work of Open Doors. And there are some cards that look a little bit like this on the table outside. By filling this in and giving it back to me, um, this will ensure, first of all, that you uh, get your own copy of the World Watch list um, and uh, keep in touch with regular uh, information about what's, what's going on. And you can also ask for a free, yes, ladies and gentlemen, free copy of the book God Smuggler, uh, which tells you the story of Brother Andrew and how uh, his mission to change the world uh, was birthed and grew uh, and uh, how it has developed today. So uh, please do fill out one of those if you'd like uh, to find out more. But finally, all of us, whether we give or not, however we give or not, all of us can pray. These are brothers and sisters. When one part of the body is hurting, the whole body is affected. These are brothers and sisters who feel alone, who feel abandoned. Pray that they may hear our prayers. Pray that they may receive practical, tangible, physical help for their struggles as their strength weakens. Pray that they may know God's power in all that they do and all that they are for Jesus. And pray too about how we might, or how God might strengthen what remains of the, the Christian ethos of this country. Some people fear that it won't be too long before persecution rises in this land. How will we stand? How will those who already perhaps feel weakened in their faith, how can we right now encourage them how can we bless them? How can we help them to stand firm for Jesus? And by the same token, be helped by others to stand firm for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for all that we do already as a church for our persecuted family. Uh, the people I met uh, a few months ago are inordinately grateful. And uh, I was privileged to be able to stand and say, I'm not here alone, I represent a church full of people who care about you and love you and want to assure you of prayers and care. So thank you for uh, the freedom to do that uh, and for all the prayers that you offer. Your gifts, your financial gifts, your prayer gifts really do make a difference. Let's pray uh, again now. Gracious God, thank you for uh, the bounty that you have given us, the incredible uh, freedom of spiritual um, 
uh, ability that you've given us and blessed us with. Thank you for our, our physical provision of so much food. Um, uh, and just thank you, Lord, for the enormity of your love. But Lord, we pray your rich blessing upon those who don't have, who, who are worried about um, lack of food in their cupboards uh, and uh, who are worried that their, their um, spiritual strength is weakening to the point of dying. We pray, Lord, that you will encourage and bless and build those who are hurting. And may they know the reality of the love of Jesus Christ as we experience that for ourselves. In his name we pray. Amen.